Welcome to yet another video on SRD Cloud. In this video, I want to talk about network address translation, static particularly, with VRF. So let's get started. So here is the topology, which is um, must be very familiar to you if you if you have been watching my my videos. And in a previous video, I talked about how to set up the static NAT. Um, with a one one to one uh, relationship and in that video i talked about how to map the ip address of say pc1 which is 192.168.12 to 10.140.10.101 on the edge router and then uh, because of that network address translation the pc1 was able to talk to pc3 and back so now there is a variation in this video that on the edge router the port that is connected to the core is on a VRF instead of um, being on a, a global routing table. So let's take a look at the entire configuration. First of all the PC1. Let me make it bigger. So its IP is 192.168.12 and gateway is 192.168.11. Let us keep it minimized and look at the switch configuration, which should be nothing. I just, I just wanted to make sure that yeah, the fast Ethernet 00 and fast Ethernet 02 are in the up state. And as you can see, they are in the up state. That's all we need on this particular switch. Uh, remember, I did not set up any VLANs or port channels on the core router for this topology. And now let's look at the core router. And just say show run. So it has this. Um, interface gigabit ethernet one which is connected to the switch and that acts like a gateway and the other one the gigabit ethernet two is going north towards uh, edge router and it has ip address 172.16.11 and both of them are not in the vrf there is no vrf in this router at all configured and the bgp is between the core and edge routers and once again there is no vrf in this configuration at all with the 172.16.12 as uh, the neighbor for the asn 63000 which is edge router um, asn and redistribute connected is enabled so that any network that is connected to the core router on the southern side will be distributed to the northern side and nothing else um, I want to note that there is a default route on this uh, core router pointing towards the edge router via 172.16.12. So there is nothing else in this um, router. Let's get it closed. And here is the edge router. This is where um, the meat of this uh, presentation is. Show run. And as you can see, the first thing, the VRF is defined in this router, VRF A, with the uh, route descriptor 63000 colon 1, 63000 being the ASN of this uh, router. It's a convention followed to set the RD as the ASN colon uh, a number, a serial number. And then let's skip all these uh, cryptography stuff. And here is the uh, Gigabit Ethernet 1, which is pointing towards the core router and it is on VRF, VRFA and its IP address is 172.16.12 and the IP NAT inside is enabled on this. So this is the inside uh, portion of the network address, trans address translation. The um, right side of the edge router, Gigabit Ethernet 2 port has IP address 10.140.10.10 and it is configured as IP NAT outside, there is no VRF defined in this particular um, interface. So what's happening here is the, um, the 
VRF needs to flow, I mean, I'm sorry, the NAT has to be performed between the VRF interface on one side and global interface on the other side. That is the requirement for this particular uh, topology that I'm working on. And then there is a BGP. This BGP is mainly for um, uh, going south towards the core. Um, the ASN is 63000. The router ID is by convention the IP address on its its end, 172.16.1.2. Uh, the neighbor is 172.16.1.1 remote as 62000, which is uh, the core router. And there is a section, um, IP address family IPv4, which does not have anything. This is a spillover from my previous configuration, so this should not be in this uh, in this at all. But there is a section, address family IPv4 section for VRFA. And in that, there is a neighbor defined, 172.16.1.1 remote as 62,000. And it is active and the redistribute connect should also be enabled on it. A lot of garbage in this. Yeah, redistribute connected is also enabled on this. And here is the most important part. The IP route 000, the default route on the global address table is still there. That is for the global address um, table purposes. But there is another default route is added to send anything from the VRFA to the uh, external router 10.140.10.1. So this is very, very important. This is how the traffic will flow from edge router to external uh, router under the under the brf vrfa and finally here is an ip nat inside source static the ip address of the pc1 is 182.16.12 i'm trying to statically map it to 10.140.10.101 and vrf vrfa this is also very important because the, um, the incoming interface the gigabit ethernet one is under a VRF and that is where the traffic is coming in that needs to be translated to 10.140.10.101 on the right side of the edge router towards the external uh, router. So this is it and uh, let us also take a look at the um, IP route table. Let's show IP, sorry, show IP route. This is the global address table and as we saw earlier there is a default route to the uh, 10.140.10.1 on the external router and the 10.140.10.10 and uh, the 10.140.10.101 are connected uh, to this um, um, global address table. This 10.140.10.101 got added, let me do this again sorry. The 10.140.10.101 got added due to the NAT operation. Now let us look at the uh, same um, command on VRF, VRFA. And this contains, as expected, a default route to 10.140.10.1. And look at the, the BGP added route, 192.168.10. That is because of the BGP operation we discussed earlier through 172.16.1.1 interface on core router. So now let us also look at the external router just for the sake of completeness. Make sure um, this presentation is complete. Nothing much on this side. Let's skip all these things. So Gigabit Ethernet 1 is towards the edge router. It carries IP address 10.140.10.1. And the Gigabit Ethernet 2 is towards the, the extra um, network on the, on the other side, 10.20.30.1. And there is a route to 192.168.10.0 via 10.140.10.10 interface. I don't think this is required. And let us also look at the PC3. It 
it's ip is 10 20 30.2 this is the ip address that we are going to ping uh, from um, from pc1 but but before we do that let us ping the natted ip address 10 140 10 101 and it is working because it is actually pinging pc1 the uh, traffic is flowing from pc3 all the way to the edge router where it gets translated the destination ip gets translated from 10 140 10 101 to 192 168 so 192 168 and 10 140 10 101 or the natting uh, natted operation that we did in the edge router so interestingly with this configuration the traffic is flowing from pc3 all the way to edge router and gets translated as i just mentioned and not only that it jumps from the global uh, address table into the vrf address table and then proceeds further to travel all the way to pc1 so now let's look at pc1 and we will be pinging uh, 10 20 30 .2, which is the uh, the uh, ip address of the pc3 and that is also working fine so here what's happening is the traffic is flowing from pc1 all the way to the edge router the destination um, address remains the same 10 20 30 .2, but the source gets translated from 192 168 12 to 10 140 10 101 and 10 140 10 140 10 101 is a known ip address on the uh, external uh, network so that is the reason why the traffic flows all the way to pc3 and then back to edge router gets translated as i described earlier and then all the way back to pc1 <coughs> so i hope you um, understood the um, um, and the, the this topology which uh, includes network address translation with vrf uh, let's also take a look at the um the the, the um wire shark and uh, let me do the same thing again and you can see the communication is recorded on both uh, external to edge router as well as edge router to core router and you can see the ip address on the right is 10 140 10 101 but on the left side it is 192 168 so have a wonderful evening a night or wherever you are and i will see you another with another video very soon uh, particularly um, on the same NAT with the VRF and uh, some other combination. Bye for now.